adding and subtracting rational numbers. So we're combining um, the stuff in the last lesson about rational numbers. That rational numbers, again, are numbers that, that can be written as fractions. Um, and learning how to add and subtract them. Uh, rational numbers can also be decimals as long as they could be written into fractions. Uh, so, um, you know, instead of just showing you the old grade 8 method of how to do work with fractions, I'm going to show you two methods, another method um, of how to work with fractions that you might like. Pick and choose whatever method you like. The method, uh, the new method I'm going to show you here is using a number line. Because I, I did show you how to use a number line with the rational numbers in the last lesson. So how would you do 2 thirds plus negative 1 fifth um, on a number line? Well first remember for the number line you need to have the you need to have the same denominator. So first I'm going to do the number line method. So let's do this with the same denominator. So 3 and 5. What is the smallest number that both 3 and 5 can go into? Um, and it would be 15. Okay, so how do I turn... How do I turn 3 into 15? I times it by 5, do the same to the top. 2 times 5, 10. Don't forget the plus sign. And in here we have the minus sign. How do I turn the 5 into the 15? I times it by 3. Do the same to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, now, on a number line, here's how you do this. First, you'd have to figure out... what, are, are, what, what these numbers are close to. We're starting with 10 fifteenths. And we're adding this, um, adding a negative of this. Uh, so it's 10 fifteenths is greater than 1, sorry, greater than 0, but it's less than 1, so I don't have to go past 1. And negative 3 fifteenths is less than 0, but it's not quite negative 1, so I'll put negative 1 over here. And since the denominator is 15, I'm going to slice each thing up into 15 slight pieces. And the way you do that is um, draw 15 lines, but the actual 15th line would be the, the big number there, the line there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 there. Okay, 10 fifteenths is where I'm going to start at. 10 fifteenths is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 fifteenths. Okay, now what am I going to do? Before we proceed, let's take a look here. We have a double sign. Remember about, du about double signs? If the signs are different, it becomes a negative. So, or if you want to do the, the number line way that I, that I may have learned before, Remember, positive means he goes in the forward direction, and then when you have a negative, that means reverse your direction. So, what we have here is 10 fifteenths. We're going to go positive in the forward direction, but then all of a sudden we see this negative sign, and we have to kick it into reverse. So, when you have a plus and a minus, a double sign, that means it's a minus. So, the question has now become this 10 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths. So, at 10 fifteenths, now we're going to go backwards three of those 15 spots, three fifteenths. So one, two, three spots. We go back, and that there, if you don't know that 10 minus 3 is 7, that is 7 fifteenths. So that's your answer. Okay, that's the number line way of doing it, the old fashioned way of doing it, which you're probably going to swear at me for even showing this number line because it's pretty easy when you do it this way. Um, once you figure out that um, that is 10 fifteenths and that becomes a minus and that becomes 3 fifteenths, all you got to do is just go 10 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths and 10 minus 3 is 7. Remember the rule is you do the tops and leave the bottom. 10 minus 3 and you leave the bottom is 15, 7 fifteenths. Okay, so 
Uh, that's the number line way of doing it, and then there's the, the old-fashioned way of doing it. Most of you are probably thinking, why on earth would anyone not do this way? Well, I don't know. It, you know, the whole thing of leave the bottom, what does that even mean? Do the tops, leave the bottom. It makes no sense. It's just a, a math rule that we all memorize. This kind of, I think, you have a better understanding about the 15th and what they all mean. Okay. Um, so, let's try this one here. Negative 1 fourth plus 2 and 1 sixth. If you were going to do this on a number line, you need a common denominator between 4 and 6 which some of you might jump at 24 and say that's the common denominator, but there actually is a smaller number that both 4 and 6 go into, and that's 12. So, um, we make our number line. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have a number that's less than 0, so we'll need to put 0 here. Uh, but it's not it's still not as it's 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 not as low as negative. Uh, it's in between negative one and zero is what I'm trying to say. And over here we have two something, so we're going to need to have zero, one, uh, two, three. Okay. But like I said before, we need to have a um, common denominator between these two, which I said 12 would work out well. This over 12, that over 12. So how do we take 4 into 12? Uh, how does 4 become 12? Times by 3. Do the same to the top. It becomes negative 3 twelfths. Plus, how does, uh, don't forget the 2. How does 6 become 12? We times by 2, we times by 2, and we get that. So the question has now become with the common denominator, negative 3 twelfths plus 2 and 2 twelfths. You don't have to do the converting into an improper fraction if you're doing the number line method here. You can do it uh, this way. Um, although actually, um, on, on this, you might want to use convert this into a, a, um, a mixed number, or an improper fraction, sorry. So this, if you rewrite this, it becomes 12 times 2, 24 plus 2, 26 over 12. So we can write this as 26 over 12. Okay, now, using the number line, we separate into twelfths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Didn't take long to do. Start at three, negative 3 twelfths, that's over here. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That's negative 3 twelfths. Twelfths, sorry. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up 26 twelfths. So from here, we're going to go up 26. Remember, we start at negative 3, and then the plus means we go forward or up to the right. 26 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So that's where we end up there. That's our answer. Well, what is the answer? It's 1 and how many 12s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's 1 and 11. Well, that's the number line way of doing it. If you're going to do it the old-fashioned way, um, again, you would take this information, the denominator stuff. So you'd have negative 3 over 12 plus 26 over 12. And the old-fashioned rule, you do the tops, leave the bottom. Now here, negative 3 plus 26. You're down 3, then you're up 26. That means you're up 23 over 12, and this is improper, change it to mix, 12 goes into there once, with 11 left over, over 12. So, again, either way, you get the same answer, pick whatever one you will like. How about this, negative 3.1 plus 1.2. So, we have a number that's lower than 3, and we're going to go up 1.2. 
Now, on the number line, we're the number we're going to go up by is tenths, one tenth. You go by the smallest division. One tenth is what we're going up by. We're not going to go by two tenths. We're going to go by one tenth. So each line will be 0.1. So the lowest number we should have is negative 3.1, um, which means that 4 is the negative 4 is going to be the lowest whole number. So negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, just in case. You know, let's use that much space. You can kind of guess we're at negative 3 and we're going to go up forward 1-ish. You can kind of estimate where the answer is going to be. If we're starting at negative 3-ish and we're going up 1-ish, the answer is going to be around negative something around here. Okay, so um, if we're going to use a number line, let's count by tenths. So we're going up by tens now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I think that's where we're going to stop. We already estimated the answer is going to be around here somewhere. So negative 3.1 would be, there's negative 3. Negative 3.1 would be right here. And we're going to go up 1.2. So we're going to go up. Um, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sorry, uh, 2 tenths first, 1, 2, and then 1 full number, that would be 1.2, so that's like, like 12 spots we're moving it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right there. And when you do that, what is that number right there? Well, negative 1, 1.12345678 9. Negative 1.9. Alright, that's one way to do it with the number line. Another way to do it is just the old-fashioned way. And the old-fashioned way looks like this. <coughs> without a calculator, which is what I expect you to do is without a calculator, you have negative 3.1 plus 1.2. Now the other way that I taught you how to do integers doesn't really work that well with, with decimals. So here's another method of how to handle integers when you're adding subtracting integers. Um, first, when you see that the signs are different, you know you're going to subtract. So if the signs are different, if the signs differ, then you're going to subtract the two of them. Okay, so let's subtract these two. Um, even though we have this plus sign here, we're actually, in reality, we're going to sub subtract the two. Th once you've done that, we'll get to that in a second, once you've done that, the actual sign that you get, is it positive or negative, it belongs to whoever the, the bigger number is. So 3.1 is a bigger number than 1.2. Now, actually, that's not the right thing to say. 3.1, the, the correct way to say this is, whichever number is farther from zero, is the sign we're going to use. Okay, so 3.1 is farther away from 0 than 1.2. If you look at our number line, which we just had before. So because, so then the, the answer takes the sign of the number farthest from 0. Okay, so um, let's. So we already know that ne that uh, this is the large. This is the number farthest from zero. So the answer is going to be negative something. So we subtract these two first because the signs. The, the original question differed. So we subtract. So one minus two can't do. We borrow over here. It's two. That makes that nine. 
and uh, 2 minus 1 is 1 and the decimals again in adding have to line up so it's 1.9 so it's 1.1 1 .1 when you subtract and because this is the farthest from 0 we take its sign which is negative the answer is 1.9 so again whatever method you like okay this one here negative 5 fourths plus 3 and 1 fifth I'm going to just do this the old fashioned method um, but you can still, number line help is helpful to estimate roughly what the answer would be. Here you have a double sign. So we have negative 5 fourths, let's get rid of the double sign, plus minus becomes a minus 3 root 1 fifth. From here what you're going to do is common denominator between 4 and 5. Well first off, let's get rid of this improper fraction, make it a Sorry, get rid of this improper fraction, make it a mixed number. So this question get, will be rewritten as negative 5 fourths minus 3 times 5 plus 1, 16 over 5. Common denominator we need now. If these are different, we would use 20 as our common denominator. How do you make 4 into 20 times by 5? Do the same to the top. You get negative 25, but don't forget the minus sign, right? So that's why it's negative 25. Minus... How does 5 become 20? You times it by 4. Do the same to the top. 16 times 4. Trust me. Uh, you should do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, 4 times 10 is 40. 40 plus 24 is 64. That's what you would get. Now here, you just do your regular kind of integers. You're down 25, then you're down 64. And if you need help, you, know, you can do it on the side. Or, using this little rule that I mentioned up here, if the signs are different, you subtract. Well, I forgot to mention, if the signs, that's supposed to be an arrow, if the signs are the same, then you're going to add. And that's what we have here. If the signs are the same, we're going to add these two together. So, you're down 25 and you're down 64, so it's like 25 plus 64, which is 89. And the sign 64 is the most furthest away from 0. And it's got this minus sign with it. So it's negative. So let's say 80, negative 89. However, you get the answer. It is negative 89. Over 20. And then how many times does 20 go into 89? It goes in 4 times with 9 left over over 20, and don't forget the negative sign there, it's negative 4 9 twentieths. Uh, this one here, same deal um, as before, we look at uh, the double sign. Double sign means two signs are the same, it's positive, so it becomes positive. And then using the rule we did above, these two signs are different here, so that means we're going to subtract 3.9 minus 2.3. 9 minus 3 is 6. Put the decimal there. 3 minus 2 is 1. Is it positive or is it negative? Remember, the answer takes the sign of whichever number is farther away from 0. Negative 2.3, positive 3.9. Whatever sign it is, if it, I mean, this could, some people are thinking, is this an adding sign or a subtract or a plus sign? It's both. It belongs to this too, by the way. Um, and since this number is the farthest away, it's positive 1.6. We take the sign of whatever number is farther away. There's the, your answer. And here are your skill testing questions. Enjoy.